people are they? That's my family. If they're your family, why do you have their names written down? Charlie, you can't be alone anymore. If you ever need my help, I'm here. I'm writing something, and I have to finish before my words run out. I'll take care of them. May I ask what your relationship is? I don't know. I don't know. The road less traveled is the hottest I know. Gets lonely when you're out on your own. Do you live here? I'm his friend, but your dad needs you right now. I mean, this young woman is full of surprises. This is no time for jokes. It's the perfect time for jokes. <laughs> you like funny, old man. I, I love this movie. I just, I just watched it this morning, so I'm like fresh off of the movie. Oh. And I mean, I gotta say, I mean, first, I'm a big fan of you, Billy, but uh, Tiffany, I gotta say, like, you know, I've just been so proud to see, like, everywhere you've come from, like, doing stand-up at as a teenager to being homeless and being a foster child and to be like who you are right now. I'm just always proud to see what you're doing and now producing. And um, I gotta say like, when I looked at that bar mitzvah scene, I wondered if it was in the original script because it felt like the black mitzvah that I attended for you last year. Did you did you add to that scene, Tiffany, with, with what you did at the that black was, mitzvah? That was in the original script. And it was so fun when I read it in the script, I'm like, uh, definitely gonna be in this movie because I do mitzvahs. Okay, been doing them since nineteen ninety six. This is going down and like. And when when we wrote it, Jamal, I had, I had no idea. We just thought it was a really funny idea, and and a, it'd be a cool idea, and a big show stopping kind of idea to have her sing the Janis Joplin song to you know the people at the bat mitzvah. And then yeah. when we met, she goes, you know, that's my past. That's what I that's what I did for years. I went, uh, well, this is meant to be. This, you know, this yeah. whole thing was meant to be. Yeah. yeah. I wonder for you, because I know I know you've directed and produced and, and wrote a few movies, like Mr. Saturday Night is, is is one of them. And I feel like that was real personal to you and the way you grew up. Like, why, why was this story so personal to you to make here today? Like, what was... You know, well, I was, it was, I was dealing with when we when Alan's White Bell and I we've been friends since 1974, and and he worked on my Broadway show with me, and he's a wonderful writer and a great person. And so when we started crafting who who Charlie and Emma could be, we thought of this writer that we both work with at SNL named Herb Sargent, and Herb was in his late 50s and nobody else was, and we thought, well, that's a great part for you know arena for me. But I was dealing with a relative who was a, a wonderful novelist and she was um, had early onset of dementia. And as she told me one day, cause I was taking care of her. She says, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my words. I'm losing my words. And I thought how profound and we, we, you know, got her the best care we could, but I thought for a movie, for this script we were working on, if we could, if we could give Charlie that, but keep the movie funny. And yet it gives, it gives Emma, a, a, a place to reach out and, 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 and hug him in a way and, and, and take care of him and be selfless about it and, and put aside her, her, her promising singing career to take care of this guy as he tries to finish this book he's laboring to write. That's a really good story. And so, yeah. so to me, that's why it was so personal because I, I think of, of my aunt all the time. Uh, and and to, to follow up on that, I, I've seen... Tiffany in a number of films, but I've never seen her reach the emotional death on screen that she did when she was at Lake Charlie. And I really like, was like, you know, like awed by that. I got to ask you, cause I know you use Burns. I know it's spelled different, but I think about when Harry met Sally. And I want to know about when Billy met Tiffany. Like how was that first meeting and how did you, you guys get to know each other? The first meeting was uh, she had gotten the script um, after I had seen her on SNL and I went, oh my God, who is she? who is this person? Maybe she'll do this. She's going to get offered everything, but maybe, you know, because the movie wasn't set up yet to, to be made. And she flew in from Africa and we met up in a, in a, in an office at my agent's office, which was totally empty. And <laughs> the whole building was empty. And she walked in and then Tiffany tell him what, what happened. We instantly like clicked. It was like, bam, you know, no, 
I felt like, okay, so I feel like I've known Billy my whole life, right? I grew up watching him. And I remember I took my braids out as soon as I landed. Like, oh, I got to get this braids out. And they're like, yeah, you're going to meet Billy on this at this time tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, I took my braids out on my hair. What am I going to do? Should I wear a wig? Should I wear it natural? Like, what? And I, and I just decided, you know what? I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm going to wear my afro. I'm not going to wear any makeup. I'm going to just show up and meet this man. If he liked me, wonderful. If he was like, what the heck? Then, oh, well, I met Billy Crystal. And so I come in and instantly we are like chopping it up, talking about everything. And then he's t- he's pitching a movie to me. And I'm like, you know, you don't have to talk about that. Like, I'm, I'm doing this movie. It's done. I mean, my grandmother's suffering from dementia. I feel like this is a great way to pay homage to her. I mean, I understand it 110% because we're going, I'm living it now. I spend so much of my money trying to keep her up, trying to keep her going, you know, like, it is not easy, Dylan. It's being a caregiver to someone like that is very difficult because they're forgetting who you are, and it's like I love this person so much. So I could totally relate to to Charlie's family not knowing and him trying to hide it, and it's like don't hide this. Let them know. Like so, I'm like I, I was just in love with this whole situation, and so happy. And the little girl inside of me, it's like yay, we're living the dream. <laughs> And Jamal, I'm just so happy to see you, man. We have grown together in this business. I'm so proud of you watching you come up in your career. And like, we got to celebrate two years ago at the Mitzvah. But, you know, Billy was there. You was there. Everybody was, we had a great time, man. And I'm so happy yeah. to see you sitting here with us today. Like, I'm super happy for you too. I'm happy for this movie. I think it says a lot. And I mean, I I, I really uh, felt, I haven't dealt with any family members uh yet knock on wood that has dementia, but just to see their situation, I really felt the story and I thought it really was touching and um, and still funny. Like at first I thought it was just gonna be, you know, ha, 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 ha. And it was really, it was really funny and moved me. So I appreciate the story. Uh, I can't wait till you guys do more pictures. I'm always a fan of both of you. So just take care, be safe out there and uh, love right here from Black Tree TV. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much.